understand are you understanding what i'm saying so um but i'm not going to do much today because there's someone else that god has prepared to do that by tomorrow we'll now look at some other aspects of it so please i want you to join me and welcome my wife Good evening. Please, you can see it. Good evening. Father, thank you for this moment. Holy Spirit, it's about you. It's about you. You are the one that revealed Jesus to us. And you are the one that teaches us how to glorify him. And we ask Holy Spirit that this evening that you reveal him to us. Show us who he truly is that we may worship him better, serve him better, and offer sacrifices that are acceptable to him. I welcome you here, Holy Spirit. You are our teacher, the spirit of truth. Let every fear in the heart of everyone go away today. Let faith, let confidence, let courage surge into our hearts by the reason of your word this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be that after the season, that gifts will be imparted and stead. Oh God, thank you, Father. And Lord, my tongue, I submit my tongue to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening. Hallelujah. You're welcome to School of Ministry 2023. Okay. You know, I've been preparing for this, but as I'm standing here, I'm actually feeling like I can't deliver it. Because when you want to talk about a person, about the person of the Holy Spirit, but the beautiful thing about it is that he is here and he will show us himself. And I want to appreciate God who has given us the privilege to be ministers of reconciliation and has given us that tool called the word of reconciliation. Everything we need for life and godliness, for ministry, for life, he has given to us. He has not left us without any witness. He has not left us like everything we need has been supplied. Now, if we are not fulfilling our assignments, it's not because it has not been provided. But because we have not prepared ourselves for what he has prepared for us. But thank God for meetings like this. These meetings are organized to get us ready for what God has made ready for us. It is not God who is not ready. It is actually his people. But we thank him for the supply of his spirit and the supply of his word too. And I also want to thank Pastor Sisi Ekwagana. Our shepherd in this place, the one God has given to us. He said, I'm going to give you a shepherd after my own heart. You know what it means? It means I'm going to inspire him. He's going to have direct access. He's going to be an authenticated dealer. He's going to, I'm going to reveal myself to him so that he can reveal um, he can reveal me to you. You know, I read somewhere in the book of First Chronicles and the Bible was talking about David. The Bible said that David perceived that God had established him as king for the sake of his people, Israel. Everything God did for David, it was actually for the people of Israel. God was, had Israel in mind, Israel's welfare in mind, and then equipped David. And this is exactly what God had done for us in this place. God had each and every one of us in mind and then gave us a shepherd after his own heart. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much for giving me the privilege to teach in Flames of Fire Conference uh, this year. I'm, I'm really grateful. There is nothing like being believed. One of the greatest gifts anybody can give you is believing in you. And even in believing in God, that's one of the greatest things you can give him. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that by faith, that we please him when we have faith. 
For without faith, it is impossible to please him. So when we have faith in him, when we believe in him, he is pleased. So everybody wants to be believed in. And pastor has believed in me and given me this um, assignment. And this is also how he has believed in all of us and given us certain platforms to function. But sometimes, you know, some people see those platforms as punishment. No. Anytime God gives you a responsibility, especially when it looks like something you cannot do, it is because he believes in you. Now, in carrying out that responsibility, you now begin to see what is in you. You. He was seeing that you were not seeing. There's no how you can see the um, um, deposits God has put in you if you don't go forth. Do you understand? The Bible made us to understand that it was when they went about preaching that the Lord went with them performing those miracles. If they hadn't gone, they wouldn't have known that they would do it. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So thank you very much, sir. I'm, I'm deeply grateful. Okay. So we'll be talking about the manifestation of the Spirit. Call it the gifts of the Spirit. That's okay. So I'm going to just do introduction today. And then tomorrow we'll continue. Tomorrow's morning. Hallelujah. You know, what we are doing now is we're going to be doing a lot of teachings. So we are in a school. Just, I, I just want you to have that mind that you are in a school. And this is a school of ministry. Do you understand that? And you know, in school, people are trained not to be the end users. Do you get the point now? We are trained not, not to be the end users. You are trained so that you will be able to use what you have been given and then also teach other people what you have been taught. That's why when you want a lecturer for a department, you go, you pick the person that studied that very course. Is it not you? That studied that very course. You don't go any other place. So please, I will want everyone to listen, not just for personal consumption. Listen also as someone who has an assignment to perform, even if you've not discovered it. So this is not a moment to just come and receive blessing. That's okay. It's okay to receive blessing. But please, listen with the mindset that there is someone else who is going to learn from you someone else is going to be impacted from you there's a society waiting for you please sit like that listen like that take notes like that don't just take notes as you know just you just just for you alone do you understand okay so the manifestation of the spirit or the gift of spirit that's what we're talking about so we're going to read a scripture then will flow. First Corinthians chapter 12. Meanwhile, Pastor TJ, God bless you for leading us to pray. Though that prayer, that prayer period was it was fairy. God bless you so much. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 12. I'll read from verse 1. Then uh, subsequently we'll be reading other verses. From verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. I would not have you ignorant. If you have your Bible, you just open it and look at it, okay? So you can make your markings. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a cost, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit and there are differences of administrations but the same lord and there are di diversities of operations but it is the same god which worketh all in all verse 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit without that is so that all may profit that's what it means there verse 8 for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, 
to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all this worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. A good read. Hallelujah. So what is manifestation? When we say manifestation, what does it mean? I don't want to assume that we all know, so that's why I'm coming that though, okay? Coming, let's just learn from the basics. So what's, what's manifestation? Manifestation is an event, action, that clearly shows or embodies something that is abstract. Manifestation is an event action that clearly shows or embodies something abstract so it means that manifestation is making something that is not seen to be seen do you get that he said something that is abstract giving it a body an action that shows an event that shows something that cannot be seen but then it is now being made to be seen so it means that this giftings of the Holy Spirit is a proof of the presence and the workings of the Holy Spirit in the midst of his people do you get what I'm saying so which means that anytime we come together there should be the manifestation of the gifts if we claim that the Holy Spirit is in our midst. Do we get that? I want you to understand. Please, just follow this. It's a teaching. Just follow it. It's as literal as I'm just saying it. Because, okay, we're going to see the reason this, you know, there's no, we don't usually, people are afraid to manifest and we're going to see that. So, anytime there's a, there's a presence of the Holy Spirit in a congregation or in a place or in the life of a man there there's going to be an evidence that the Holy Spirit is there do you understand that now okay so there are some truths we need to know about these gifts there are things I wrote down we need to know about this gift number one they are gifts they are not worked for they are not bought they are gifts and if you see what the Bible said that in verse 11, he said, But all this worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So it's a gift. The Holy Spirit gives it by his own decision. He's the one that gives the gift. So he doesn't give this gift because of my physical stature. He doesn't give this gift because of my eloquence. He doesn't give this gift because I am spiritual or because I'm religious. He gives this gift by his own will. How many of you are happy that the giving of the gift of the Holy Spirit is dependent on the Holy Spirit? And you see, like I always teach in El Call, that the spiritual, the Holy Spirit actually, is someone that anybody can assess, but only few persons assess him. The Holy Spirit is someone, anybody. When I say anybody, whether in church or outside church, anybody can assess, but very few persons can assess him. Do you get it? So which means anybody here can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you know something about God is that he gives us without, he, he, just, he just pours it out. He's the one that brings it. He's, he's the one that decides, I want to do this. And he does it. So it's not a thing of, have I been spiritual enough to receive this gift? Have I been religious enough to receive this gift? Now, I'm not trying to speak down on being righteous or being holy. But I'm trying to tell you that as you are seated here, that you are qualified by the reason of the decision of the Holy Spirit to receive the gift of the Spirit. If there's any qualification, I'm just trying to show you that it's the Holy Spirit that gives. So it's a gift. Do you get the point now? Okay. So because um, they are gifts, they can be revoked. The Bible tells us 
that the giftings and the callings of God in Romans chapter 11 verse 29 that the giftings and the callings of God are without repentance I need to say this again and again there are a lot of persons that have touched certain levels in Christ in God and have related with the Holy Spirit in certain dimensions and now it's as though your life is dry it's as though you're looking for those giftings and then you're not seeing them again and then some people will say that the Holy Spirit took the, the gift and left no anytime he gives you a gift he does not revoke it if he calls you he does not revoke it even when you've not answered that call he does not revoke it pastor has taught us this several times the only thing is that he's waiting for you that same point where he met you he's waiting for you there and what god is going to do today and he's going to do throughout this week a lot of restorations that thing you think you have lost and on and then you think you can never have back again I need to let you know that these giftings are still inside you. So what do you have to do? Because they are gifts, they can be stirred. They can be stirred. Hallelujah. In the book of um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul told Timothy, stir the gifts of God that is inside you. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. He says, stir it, stir it up, stir it up. What are those giftings you you know you've received and then you've operated in the bible is letting us know today that it can be stirred because it's a gift you can stir it up that's why throughout this this season when you are asked to pray please open up your mouth to pray i'm going to show you the reason why you have to pray especially in the holy spirit hallelujah okay so because they are gifts I'm still talking about on that they are gifts I've said you know the truth we need to know about these gifts number one they are gifts so because they are gifts they can be they can be revoked and because they are gifts they can be stirred even when it has gone idle and then because they are gifts they can't be used to assess a man's character pastor just mentioned it they can be used to access a man's character what we can only use to assess a man's character is the fruits of the spirit not the gifts of the spirit please let this thing sink it's not the manifestation of the gifts that ascertains a man's character because it's a gift but the fruits in fruits we grow into fruit we grow into fruit fruits fruit of the spirit is the, the fruit we bear its character that is why Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he said, by their fruits, not by their gifts, by their fruits, you shall know them. Do you get the point? So that as somebody is manifesting certain gifts, does not mean that God's authentication is on that person's life. I need to say this again. That somebody is manifesting a certain gift does not mean that God's authentication is on that person's life. It can show that God's authentication is on that person's ministry, that person's assignment, but not on the person's life. God can authenticate a man's assignment, but not the man. And that is where a lot of people get it mixed up in the body of Christ. So because somebody is manifesting certain gifts, we tick, we give that person a tick, we verify the person. No, it doesn't work that way. And that is why you see a lot of people, they say, ah, I married this person, no. I married and then look at what I'm seeing. No, you, we are looking at gifts. How do you know a man? By the fruits you shall know, not by the gift. Jesus said you shall know by the fruit. Do you get the point now? Please let it sink, let it sink. When you're doing anything in the body of Christ, or don't just verify a man because of the manifestation of the gift of the spirit you know sometimes those things can be confusing and on but you are going to see it should not confuse you if you are walking in tandem with the spirit of god hallelujah and you know there these gifts are without repentance so a man can even live in sin and manifesting the gifts did you hear what i just said a man can be living in sin and manifesting the gifts. So you don't authenticate a man because he performs miracle. You don't authenticate a man, a man, because he does this. No, it's the fruit, the character. 
love, peace, gentleness, self-control. These are the things that we can look at and then authenticate. Okay, follow me. Hallelujah. So because they are gifts, they can be asked for. You can ask. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit that gives. But then in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, let me show you what Paul said. He said, follow after charity, verse 1, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. Then verse 13, he says, wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So which means is that there are two gifts he just mentioned there. So he said, you can ask for this. Do you get the point? So anybody can ask for a particular gift. I don't know if you know before now that you can ask for a gift. You can. You can ask for these gifts. And you know that when you ask that God is going to give it to you. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that? Okay. Then the second truth we need to know about the manifestation of the spirit, that is the gifts of the spirit, is that it is centered. It is spirit-centered. It's about the spirit. That is what I mean by about the spirit now. It's the spirit that gives it. It's the spirit. It is manifested by the spirit. It is the spirit that gives it. It is the spirit. It is the gift of the spirit. It is a supernatural gift. It's not a physical gift. Do you get it now? It's a supernatural gift. It's, it's, not a, it's not a physical gift. So, if I'm going to operate that, that gift, then I have to operate it at the instance of the Spirit. You know, sometimes somebody, you know, to, because you have the gift of prophecy, you now want to be prophesying anywhere you go. No, 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 no. It's, it doesn't work like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, it's the Spirit. It's the gift of the Spirit. It's a supernatural gift, not your personal gift. Okay, so he's the one that gives it as he wills. So to operate effectively, we must have an effective and functional relationship with the Holy Spirit. Do you see it? So which means that when I have this gift of the Spirit to operate functionally, and what do we call functionally now? For everyone to profit. If you're operating in it and everyone, the church is not profiting, then it is not effective. Because the purpose is that all may do what? Profit. Do you get what I'm saying? Please absorb these things. It's so beautiful, you know, knowing these things. Hallelujah. So if you have a, an effective and functional relationship with the Holy Spirit, then you will be able to um, manifest this gift effectively. Hallelujah. Then number three, number third point, the truth about this, the gifts of the Spirit, is that it's for the profit of all. For the profit of all, not for personal use. Now, when I say not for personal, it's not just for, some, for your personal gain. Of course, anything the Holy Spirit is going to do through you, he will first of all do in you. Do you understand? Uh -huh. Like, there are certain gifts that, of course, you're going to gain from the gift and then. But what I'm trying to say is that it is not something you possess just for yourself. It is for the common good. The Bible tells us in, somewhere in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 that the church, the body grows by what every joint supplies. Do you get it? Do you get it? So if all of us have the gift of the, of the spirit, it makes the church to grow faster. Do you get what I'm saying? It makes the church to grow faster. But, but you know, many times when we receive these gifts, we feel like we are above every... No, that's the gift you are given is for the church. So if this brother receives a gift, we should be happy that one of us has received the gift because this gift is for us. Do you get the point? If we have someone who has a gift of prophecy, it's for us. If someone has interpretation of, the, of tongues, it's for us. So it's not that you now receive this gift, you now go and start a ministry. That's a common rascality. We now go and start a ministry because we have a gift, a gift. No, it's for the common of the church. You know, when you receive this gift, let me say this, when this gift is given to you, it doesn't make you better than the next person. 
you to follow me. It doesn't make you better than the next person. As a matter of fact, for the fact that you've received it, you, you have even become a servant to the next person. Because if you know these things, when you receive this gift, it's, this is one of the things that will keep your head down. Not when you now receive this gift. You say, do you know me? Like, can you interpret tongues? Me, once I hear it, bam, I tell you what it means. No, no, that's not... It's for the benefit of everyone. For the benefit. So if the church is not benefiting, then which means there's something, you know, something is wrong. Follow me. Hallelujah. Okay. So why is it that believers don't operate in those gifts? I don't want to say don't have. Because let me tell you, many of us here are gifted. But we don't operate. Number one is ignorance. Ignorance. How many of you have ever asked the Lord for a, a gift, a spiritual gift? You've ever asked the Lord for a spiritual gift? No, I want your hand above your head. Did you receive it? You are not sure. You, you, you get the, you sit down. You're not sure if you receive it. How will I know if I received it? How will you know if you received it? Because the gift is for service. The gift is for the profit of all. The gift is for service. So when I receive this gift, remember that manifestation is an event that embodies something that is not seen. So if I receive this gift and I'm going to, if, how will I know if this gift is manifesting? I go out in the field. So when I get into the field and I begin to manifest the gift, that's an event now. There's no how you will know if the gift came until, because the gift, okay, why are you asking for the gift? Why are you asking for the gift? Now this is the question I'm asking you to ask yourself. Why are you asking for the gift of the Spirit? Maybe because you want to be relevant. I'm putting it to you that you want to be relevant into, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom of God. So that's why you ask, right? I want to be relevant. I don't want this plain Christianity again. I want to be relevant. Now that it has been given to you, how will you know if it's there? Is it not in the place where it is needed? That's why I say many of us have it. You can't ask the Lord and if someone say, Father, give me, give me, give me. How will you know he has given you? Thank God for the teachings. So the reason, one of the major reasons is ignorance. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1, Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant of spiritual gifts. I need you to know about them. I need you to know everything about them. So some people don't even know about spiritual gifts before. But now we know. And thank God for illumination. So that one solved. Then secondly, is lack of proper teaching and wrong teachings. That is inadequate and wrong teachings. We saw those phrases in growing up spiritually. Inadequate and wrong teachings. When people are not taught well, they won't understand what spiritual gifts are and what they are for. And I think that majorly it is the what they are for that is making a lot of people not to operate in it. What they are for. We have seen that the purpose for spiritual gifts is for the profit of the church and not just the church, the society too. The profit of the church and then the society. So which means that once this gift comes, it makes me a servant. Now an effective servant because I've been gifted supernaturally. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
It is that all may profit. That's the purpose of the gifts. That all may profit. I don't know what you know. What, what you know before now about spiritual gifts. But it's that all may profit. It is not, you know, literal, the literal way we say it. In as much as that way, that, that, this is what I want to say now, is a reality. But literally, when we say, I need this gift so that I can fulfill my ministry. Many times when we say my ministry, it is the flesh, the, our ambition that we are talking about. Not necessarily the assignment God has given to us that will, you know, lift the name of Jesus on high. But now we know what it's for. If you are not into service, you won't see the gift manifest, even if you have it. You get. You won't see the gift manifest, even if you have it. It's just like someone that studied, um, maybe foreign language, a foreign language. Maybe Chinese. You now study Chinese. And then you come to church. There's no, we don't have need for Chinese, for example. Will you be speaking it up and down? But if you're now employed in an embassy where it's needed, you begin to manifest. Is it not? So it can be there all the while. And then, and then someone else says, hey, can you speak Chinese? He says, eh. I said, all this while I knew. I said, yes, I can speak Chinese. I said, so what happened? Now there's, there's no, there's no need. But once I go to a place where the once demand meets, it flows. It begins to manifest. That's why in this place, you see in this place, ROL platform has been created for everybody. ROL platform created for everybody. Go and manifest. Okay. The next one is, I think a lot of people are also here. People are afraid they will run off course. The fear of running off course. There are people that are afraid of height in the spirit. Just like physically, there are people that are afraid of height. You know about people that are afraid of height. Once they climb, climb first story, one story building, they don't want to look down from the rail. There are people that are also like that in the spirit. They are afraid of height because they don't want to fall. Anytime they start rising, all they think about is, what if I fall? But the Bible tells us that he that called us is faithful. Who will also do what? Do it. He that called us is faithful. Who will also do it? Remember that it's a supernatural gift. Do you understand? It's a supernatural gift. So if you are afraid of accessing the depth of God. You will see yourself being afraid of both receiving the gift and then operating in the gift. Because you will now be thinking, ah, what if I now do something and then one demon will now enter? What if I now do something and then misdo? What if I now do... So those what if, what if, and the more you now hear this what if, it will now be cooling down your morale, cooling down, you now say, ah, let me just stay. You ask for this gift of prophecy and then it's now given to you. There's only asking, are you sure? Are you not sure? Is this one prophecy? Is it not is it prophecy? Is it from God or my mind? Is it my mind? Is it my thoughts? Is it you're now confusing? Ah, now let me pack this thing by the side because I don't want. Some of people are afraid. Another thing is a lot of people are afraid that they'll become proud. See, if they receive these gifts now, they can't submit anymore. They'll become proud. Someone said, and I agree with that person, but thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit, that the sin of fear is the, is the commonest condoned or enabled sin in church. People are just afraid. And they think it's normal. The day I saw in the scripture, in the book of Revelation, that even the fearful are going to hell. I discovered that fear is not just something that my humble self says, ah, Lord, you know I'm afraid and it makes me humble. No, 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 no. God takes it serious. And that's why it is recorded how many times? Over 300 times in the scripture. He said, do not be afraid because it is not of God. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. 
And fear incapacitates you. Fear will make you not to do that which you are. I know why I'm laying this emphasis. I know why I'm taking this time to lay. You know, I can just come out here and now tell you what word of wisdom means, what word of knowledge is and on. I can do that. But I know why I'm laying this emphasis. Because after this week, you will blaze. You will blaze without fear. You will blaze confidently and courageously. You know, I usually tell people, why I use, use to myself an example? Because I see myself as a living example. I used to be afraid. That is, I used to be fear itself and then people will now fear me. People will now take fear from me. Physical, you know, to put leg physical, you are afraid. Talk more of the spiritual. But as they're studying about the person of the Holy Spirit, I discovered that the Holy Spirit is someone, the Bible calls him the spirit of truth. When the Holy Spirit came into my life, everything he's doing is truth. All I need to do is to walk with him and I can never walk in lie. I can never walk in lie. So sometimes you receive that gift and then you are afraid. Should I or should I not? What if, what if not? But the things I need you to know is that you have to stay with the Spirit. It is the Spirit that gave you this gift. Stay with Him. Have a functional relationship with the Holy Spirit. I need to let you know that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is greater than your frailty. And you, should, you yourself should also acknowledge your frailty. A lot of us have not acknowledged their frailty. So you want to operate in the physical. You want to manifest supernatural gifts in using physical abilities. And this is where we fail. So you look at yourself, look at your abilities, and then you now match it with the supernatural gifting, and then you find it difficult to... But you cannot. Because supernatural abilities, you also manifest them in the spirit. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is not the kind... The Holy Spirit will not bring you out. Something he told me, you know, last year. He said, Mambo, it is, I won't I wouldn't carry a, a, a bag of salt and put on your head and then cause the rain to fall on you. So when the Holy Spirit gives us these gifts, everything that will make for the smooth running of this gift, he has also prepared it. So what do I have to do? Trust. So you see, if you are afraid to manifest and operate the gifts of the Spirit, all you need to do is to learn who the person of the Holy Spirit is and begin to have a functional relationship with Him. Work with Him. Talk with Him. Tell Him your concerns. Tell Him your fears. And then listen to Him. And then absorb his ab abilities. Allow his abilities to find expression in and through you. I remember the first time I received the gift. And then I was, uh, you, know, you know, God ushered me into an office. These were the two things with my natural person I will never want to get into. Because it does not just involve me if it involves an entire church. But in my walk with the Holy Spirit, I have learned that all I need to do is to ask, Holy Spirit, this one is not clear. Please help my frailty. You know I'm afraid. I'm not even sure if it's my flesh or my, Lord, help me. And then I switch into tongues. Because when you begin to speak in tongues, there's this clarity that comes. Listen, many of us have not, I'm going to talk about it. Many of us have not understood the depth, the power of tongues. There's this clarity, crystal clear clarity that comes. So one of the things you have to do if you are afraid that you run off course or that you are afraid that you become so proud and then you now fall away. Ah, why should you be thinking about falling away? The one that called you is faithful and he will do it. Remember that he will do it. You should remember that he will do it. So stay with the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls him the spirit of truth. John chapter 4, 14 verse 17. If you check the chapter 15 also. He calls him the spirit of truth. He will not lead you into lie. He will not lead you into lie. Do you get the point? 
Then number two, stay with the word. Whatever you do in the spirit, match it with the word. Whatever experience you're having in the spirit, match it with the word. Pastor has taught us severally, and it's true, that the spirit and the word is like the train and the rail. So the train, the spirit, and then the rail, the word. Don't go beyond the rail. Sometimes you can be so sure, but if the rail is not running it along, please don't go beyond the rail. Stay with the word. Stay within the borders of the word. Stay within the borders of the word. Okay? He said, your word have I hid in my heart that I may, sin, I may not sin against you. That I may not go off. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So I can't walk in darkness. Because my feet are illuminated. My path illuminated. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Then the next thing you have to do is to trust him. Trust him to lead you. Trust him to lead you. You receive a gift. Gifts of healing. And then you now go to... You, by the time you finish healing, praying for healing. They tell you that the person had died. And is a mortuary. You go back to him and say, Lord, that's what it said. You have a relationship with the person that gave it to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't take the gift and run off. He's the one that's got the manual. Of course, you can't even run off. And then be effective in it. I say, Lord. And then he now shows you. Because when you receive this gift, you begin to grow in it. You begin to mature in it. And in every maturation processes, there are fallings. You, you are going to toddle. You're going to miss it here and there. You may miss it here and there. But if you continue with the usage, you're going to get it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then the next thing you have to do is to submit one to another. This one is a very powerful tool to staying on course and keeping your head down without being proud. Because giftings can take you, blow off your head, make you proud. Do you know what it means? You cross come out, word of knowledge is going out everywhere. Word of wisdom, prophecy. The next thing you just put behind your name, apostle, prophets, prophetess. That is your head is just blown off. That you can see into the spiritual. Because that's also one of the reasons many of us don't operate. Because some other persons don't give other persons opportunity to manifest. So I abolize I think Kili. So because I now have prophecy, I will just come everything now. By the time I now finish talking, I will say, hey, nah, eh, this woman of God. Hey. I'm not trying to teach you that you can get this gift to, but I'm trying to show you that Imahwa. The word of knowledge ever concentrated. Hey, you just be looking at me like this. Hey. Nah, eh. That's why when God gives you a shepherd, listen, anybody that comes across pastor, what he does is to put his hand inside you and bring it out. That's what we call leader. The Bible talked about certain men that went to David. In the cave of Adullam, he went to that cave. And then the Bible said, those that were in debt, those were in debt, they entered the cave and met David there. In that cave, the Bible said, and David became a captain over them in the cave. By the time they came out, they were mighty men. What happened? A man put his hand and they did not come out like, hey, they will now be hailing David. Hey, nah, I'm a evil giant. Hey, and none of them can kill giant. Bible made us understand that they killed more giants than David. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because one of the reasons the book, the, you know, many of us are not grew, like manifesting is because there are persons that have just brought that covering. I 
And listen, I'm trusting God and I'm believing that each and every one of us that is hearing this, that when the Lord blesses you and gives you gifts, that you should know for, it's for the church. And not for you to intimidate young people in the church. Anybody that comes around you should pick up. Pick up. That's what pastor does. That's what pa pastor believes in anything. Anything. Pastor does not believe in the gender, male and female. Uh -uh. Once you are a human being, he believes in you. Once you are alive, even if you like, be the one that is servicing all the, all the men in one prostitute's house. You are here, you are. Pastor will believe in you. I'm not saying it because I'm married to him. He's a man I worked with long before marriage came. Because when you function, as the Holy Spirit wants you to function with the gift, what will happen is that all will profit. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. All will profit. I know why I'm making this emphasis. Because there's so much rascality in the body of Christ that many times, a lot of people, all they're now doing is just to eat. Eat of one man. But that's not God's design anymore. God doesn't just want one Moses. And then every other person that does that cannot enter the holy of holies. Jesus came, took 12 men. The next testimony that was given about these 12, these are they, they are turning the world upside down. Turning the world upside down. That's God's intention. That's God's intention. So if I'm manifesting, it's for the profit of all. You see what Pastor and I are doing, now all of us are doing, to train all of you so that you can see that you can and that God has designed you to carry this thing and become it for the profit of all. Not the one you go and be intimidating people, carrying olive oil everywhere and collecting seed. That's a rascality. Going everywhere, prophesying, prophesying on people. Telling them who to marry or who not to marry. That's not God's design for you. We're going to see all those things. Because there are certain oppressions that we have now that even a lot of us, that is where we want to be. Already a lot of people, not us now, because you are in the right place. That's what some people want to be. Year in, year out. All you want is, what are you seeing for me? Buoluma, muma, nisim. Buoluma. What are you seeing for me? But that's not how God wants the new creation to perform. Do you understand? That's why that's what we do. Raising leaders. Elimination. If your position in this place is just, just to be eating, 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 you won't be satisfied though. Because you eat, oh, will you eat? Yes. But you just discover that you're not satisfied. Because the reason you're, you're being fed with the kind of thing you're being fed is so that you will take the bread and release the seed. The seed I'm talking about now is not seed of money. That's not, that's not, you know, once you say seed, I'm explaining everything now because things have been bastardized. I'm talking about bread that is revelation when you eat and then revelation when you share. That's why we go out to win souls. Hallelujah. So let me now get into, you know, what a lot of us will be. Also each into here. Hallelujah. Now from this scripture, we have seen that there are nine gifts there. Nine gifts. And you know, the Holy Spirit is such a beautiful person. There's how he designed this thing. And if you look at it at first glance, you may not see it. But you know, as you study the scripture... He arranges and rearranges some of this. He just makes it clear. So these gifts are actually divided into three. Divided into three. You will see how. They, that is by relationship. They are divided into three. There's this first three. That is called the vocal or the utterance gifts. The vocal or the utterance gifts. They are the speaking gifts. Just speaking gifts. 
and they are diverse tongues diverse tongues that is diverse kinds of tongues you see it listed there diverse type kind of tongues that is in verse 10 now then interpretation of tongues then prophecy and these three are heavily related so prophecy tongues interpretation of tongues prophecy then the second group is one that is called the power gifts power gifts they are called power gifts because they that is they bring certain supernatural manifestation to pass there's the working of miracles under that working of miracles working of miracles then there's gifts of healings that's how the bible puts it gifts of healing gifts of healing then the third one is faith faith is under power we're going to see all these things faith then the third one did we get what i said the power okay then the revelational ones word of wisdom how many of us have heard about word of wisdom i know many it's not very common with a lot of us word of wisdom word of knowledge discerning of spirits if you look at that place it did not call it discernment hmm? is discerning of spirits where did i get all those things from where we read from verse first corinthians chapter 12 verses 8 to 10 that's where i got all those things so not from my head do you understand okay by tomorrow we'll start off with the vocal gifts but i want to just make mention some things because i want us to pray the vocal gifts the vocal gifts are we together at this point have you learned something the vocal gifts one of them is tongues diverse kinds of tongues diverse kinds of tongues now these diverse kinds of tongues is actually the door into the supernatural if i will call it the door into the accessing of all other gifts tongues tongues now it can be used privately and then it can also be used publicly if you read the book of first corinthians chapter 14 you go back home and study it you discover that paul made emphasis on these three utterance gifts tongues interpretation of tongues and prophecy and then he he related them he tied them together so tongues tongues are actually they are the ones we know the tongues we know the tongues we know like at the evidence at the uh, baptism of the holy spirit the first evidence of the baptism of the holy spirit is tongues the first evidence of the baptism now there are certain persons that say that once you get baptized that you must not speak in tongues we have places in the scripture the first one is in the book of acts chapter 2 where the Bible showed us how the Holy Spirit came upon them and without any consultation they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance they spoke in tongues Paul met certain young men 12 young men 
And then he talked with them and discovered that they had not been baptized by the Holy Spirit. And what he did was to get them baptized by the Holy Spirit. And they spoke in tongues. Now, speaking in tongues, there's a lot of people don't believe in speaking in tongues. Because they said that Jesus did not speak in tongues. They said John the Baptist did not speak in tongues. But you know, in as much as we have the story of John the Baptist in the New Testament, John the Baptist actually operated in the Old Testament. I hope you know. The New Testament started at the death and resurrection of Jesus. Do you understand? So Jesus introduced that covenant on a better promise. So John the Baptist did not speak in tongues because he did not operate in the New Testament. And Jesus said that of all the women, of all the you know, men born of women, that none is greater than John the Baptist. Please find that scripture for me. But the Bible says that he that is in the kingdom is greater. Do you understand? The least in the kingdom is greater. Can you imagine this analogy? That nobody is greater than John the Baptist. But you see that least person in the kingdom, that least person in the new covenant is greater than John the Baptist. It's talking about us. It's talking about us. The Bible says we are greater. All those prophets that have come and gone, Elijah, Elisha, and on, you know, <laughs> we are greater than they are. Do you believe you're greater than Elijah? I like the way you kept quiet because you've not absorbed. The thing no agree you absorb. You know, I took out time to really do something about identity. It is the way you see you that you act. Like I was talking with Pastor, when I, when I was just reading about David, I said, ah, no, I need, to, I need to really, really study the leadership style of David. As I was saying it, I said, no. But Jesus is greater than David. In fact, leadership style of Jesus is great. In as well as all those things David did, do you know Jesus said greater than Solomon is here? You are greater than Solomon. A man was buried and then some people, mourners, carried a corpse and they were pursued by raiders. And with, you know, fear, they now threw the man into Elisha's um, grave. Elisha's bone raised the man. So they were running and then they saw the dead man they threw away running after them. Now the Bible said that we are greater than these ones. It should be a concern to you and I. Is it not? It should stimulate you. It's a, that is something that should make you sit down and say, <laughs> nah, I have raised you now. You want to think it. You know, you want to think it. This is the time you just go home and say, like, you mean I am greater than Elijah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what we call meditation. You're thinking on it. It's not, it's not entering. You're thinking on it. The other day, God was telling me that Catherine Kuhlman is not his greatest. He's not. He said, anything I'm going to do in the later house will be greater than Catherine Kuhlman's. But you know, some of us are asking God, no, I need to show you. I, we, that is, expand that thing you wrote as expectation. I don't know if you got to the point where you now write expectation, you now, now cancel the expectation and say, Lord, have your way through me. <laughs> Lord, through me. You know the way, maybe in a movie or in a film, you know, a spirit is standing before a, 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 a moving vehicle. The vehicle will just come and pass through that spirit, that, you know, that dead man, you know, all those things they do. Now say, Lord, just have access through. Have, just, just you. I want to be an extension of you. I want my tongue to be, when I open my mouth to speak, when I let my hands, let it be like a hand in the glove. Lord, just take me. And that begin to be your prayer, your desire. 
You've written, Lord, give me anointing like Catherine Kuman. Give me. And then you now discover that God's plan is that you do more than her. Just rule it. Now begin to pray. Lord, help my frailty. Help my short-sightedness. Help me to see what you see. The Bible said, no eye has seen. No ear has heard. It has not entered into the mind of anyone. So which means if there's any testimony we have heard about anybody, the Bible said that that is not the plan. The plan I have for you, no eye has seen. No ear has heard. And whatever God is going to do in and through us, if there is going to be a generation after, he's telling them, mm -mm. you see all those things that happen here? No eye has seen. He said, but he has revealed all these things to us by his spirit. That is why your relationship with the Holy Spirit is, is you, you cannot negotiate it. So talking about tongues, okay, talking about tongues. So it's the door. Tongues, when you speak in tongues, what you do is that you're speaking mysteries to God. Please, I need you to understand. There are persons that say, I'm speaking in and I don't understand what I'm saying. That is actually tongues you're speaking. That is tongues. Because you're speaking mysteries to God. Let's look at it quickly. I want us to just pray and then. Okay, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it? In the spirit he speaketh mysteries. When you speak in tongues, tongues opens up supernatural, the door of the supernatural. The longer you stay there, the deeper you go. The longer you stay there, the deeper you go. When you begin to speak in tongues, at first it will look as though you are. And let me even tell you, when you begin to speak in tongues, you start hearing some voices. What are you doing? What is this thing? Do you know why? He doesn't want you to travel. He doesn't want you to travel. Stay. You stay. It's like you start speaking in tongues. You are just at this point. You start speaking in tongues. Start speaking in tongues. Start, and you're now still hearing, what are these voices? These voices are telling you, where are you going? What do you know you're saying? What are, you're just hearing this thing. As, no, no, no. He just wants you to now open your eyes and step out. But then you have two options at that time. To step out or to step up. Now, when you step up, you're going to meet something else. Have I not prayed enough? Have I not prayed enough? But then, you're, you're not praying again. Something is telling you, ah, leave it now. Have I not prayed enough? You're just still hearing that thing. You have two options. To step out or to step up. You will now get to a point where your spirit becomes still. Still. You begin to assess the very minds of God. You begin to assess the very minds of God. When you get there, don't step out. Step up. You prayed in tongues for two hours and then you now come and say, Hey, see, for the fact that you prayed in tongues for two hours, just like Pastor will always tell us, it's no more your potential. It's no more your potential. And let me tell you, if you go to the place of prayer and you begin to pray in tongues, if you've, you've done it 30 minutes, one hour, and then you can't push forward anymore. Listen, that actually the depths of the supernatural you can access. That's the depth of the supernatural you can access. Because every other gift, the gift of healing, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of all of them pops up open clearly to you you begin to mature in them by the reason of praying in tongues so diverse kinds of tongues so there's the praying in tongues we use as a personal prayer personal prayer for our personal edification then there's this one Paul was also talking about that when we all come together and then you know there are words people have words have messages and then they now release these messages in tongues now sometimes they come in tongues of men because tongues are actually 
um, words that you did not learn. It is revealed to you supernaturally. So an evil man may begin to see himself speaking Chinese. He never went to Confucius Institution Institute. He may see himself speaking Indian. And also man who see himself speaking ethic. He did not learn it. But by the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there are tongues of men. He can speak the tongues of men. He can also speak the tongues of angels. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. That's where I'm, I'm picking what I'm saying. There are tongues of men and there are tongues of angels. Tongues of men are just like our language. Human language. Then there are tongues of angels. So sometimes we switch into certain tongues that we've not spoken before. Sometimes you know. But now when this thing now happens. You know you said something. But you don't know what you said. That is now the one Paul said. Because people usually mix it up. That's the one Paul said. That if there is no interpretation, don't speak. It is not the one that you used to pray that he's talking about. He's talking about like we come up as a teacher and say, well, can you begin to pray in tongues? And the whole church is praying. Go ahead and pray. But then when we are now done praying, and then there's this person that has a gift of diverse tongues, that the thing is still there. And that person now begins to speak. Speak. And then start speaking, you know, it's a particular language. And then speaking for a while and then now comes down. I believe God is not a God of disorder. That any, anywhere there's the gift of diverse kinds of tongue, there's actually interpretation. It's just that many times people are afraid. Are you sure if I interpret? If I interpret and it is not it. You can't grow in the gifts. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the tongue now. So don't say that ah, Paul said ah, that we should not pray in public. No, that's not what he's saying. So there's a one when you pray privately, you are defied. You come to church, everybody's praying. It's prayer time, everybody's praying. You are defied. But like I'm teaching now, and then God brings a message to someone, and then the person now starts speaking in a particular uh, um, tongue. I'm, I'm still going to bring about um, how the order comes later. And then start speaking in tongues. There's someone who has interpretation. Because interpretation of tongues cannot stand on its own. There's nothing you are interpreting when there are no tongues. So if I had the gift of tongues, of interpretation of tongues, then there must be the speaking of diverse tongues for my gift to manifest. If, what are you interpreting? Is it not when something is spoken that you interpret? I'm trying to bring both of them together now. And when we say interpretation of tongues, it's not translating tongues. That's what it means. It's interpret. What did he say? The person may give two minutes word. The person just you know, say that thing for one minute. What did he say? The Lord said, I bless you. Just one phrase. He said, does it mean all this thing he's saying? Is it? Yes, that's interpretation. Do we understand? So some persons have have that they, they know they have it but then they are now afraid now what do we do let me bring a part of the of the order here now when you have a word you have a gift like i'm focusing on this vocal gift now you have a gift and then you receive that word you don't come off and start maybe it's telling it to sections of people in church after service you woke up to a leader this is what the Lord laid in my heart to say. And let me tell you, for every word God gives, there's always a confirmation. Do you understand? For every word, he said a matter is established in the presence of two or three witnesses. That is why in prophesying in a church, one, two prophesies, then others will judge. So you don't be afraid and say, ah, no, 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 no. I don't want any embarrassment. I want us to pray, but I want, I want to say this because I want you to go home with it so that tomorrow you come back with more expectation. You know, there's this particular gift I didn't like. 
Why? Ignorance. Is it ignorance? So I didn't like it. No, now you know when you don't know anything, you just be misbehaving. Why? Because once it comes on people, they'll start rolling on the floor. So I didn't like embarrassment. You see flesh speaking. Flesh. That was my flesh speaking then. I don't want embarrassment. How will I get up from the floor and go out? And everybody will be looking at me. She is that, that sister that, that fell down. And that's even why a lot of people are resisting the Holy Spirit though. Those who will come upon people, you don't want to cry because you're mascara. You just remembered how you made up. So you don't want, you don't want to cry. The Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are resisting him. Reason. Because you're putting on white. You don't want to collapse under the power. Yes, yes. There are people that are like that. But this we just want you to release yourself and allow him to go through. You say, ah, oh, no. How will people see me if I now get off from the floor? But let me tell you what the Holy Spirit did to me. I, that flesh died. Every meeting. That is, by the time I could say, let me sit down, I'm already rolling from that point to that point. Because I used to be very self-conscious. I used to, I, I used to be, like, what, what people say about me, like, I like, I want everybody to look at me as, oh, good, you're perfect. I, I, that's, I, and then they always say, you ask me to take you. Say, you ask me to take you. I've come to take you. And I've taken you. So, once I come into a meeting, and then the power of God comes upon me, when I am still, not, I want to sit down. By the time you're, you're already there, rolling on the, you even know who you, you know yourself again. It was happening every min, every meeting until I go to the point and say, Holy Spirit, even if you like, put me inside God, I don't care anymore. It's as though you now say, okay, have you, I've settled. You've, you've, fin you've, this, you've, you've finished me, you've shattered me. So that first time I received that gift, I was carried from the place of prayer to my room. I was carried like a corpse, like two people carry me. You know, that song you used to sing, um, and fought to carry that person when he's dead. You know, that angel song children were taught to sing. One, they were two, and then they carried me. I was laughing all through, laughing all through, and all through. I did, I was unconscious, but conscious at the same time. The power of God was so much. It even got to a point that one person that was carrying me, that is, started laughing. Say laughing. I've not seen that kind of thing before. It was later when I was now being told that I, I was now told that this is, this is the, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's, he's the one that decides how to manifest. And then I was carried through. I was sleeping, but I was praying in tongues throughout. By the time I got up, I had series of encounters in that, in that sleep. That is why, listen to me, a lot of the things the Holy Spirit is already doing this weekend, don't try to submit him back into your lifestyle. Don't try. You now get back home and that, you now say, ah, let me go and warm my soup. Oh, I bought soup things I have to cook. The Holy Spirit is making you to pray, pray. So, lie, lie, I must cook this night. <laughs> but what, all he wants is, he has just finished with two in church and then you now got up from the floor, entered, entered the bus and then the thing, the earlier, it's upon you. You now get back home. And then the Holy Spirit is pressing you to pray. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We still want to force him back into our lifestyle. And then tomorrow again he say, Lord, come upon me. Uh -uh. When the supernatural makes impact on you, everything changes. And all he wants you to do is to respond. Respond, respond. You get back home and then you see yourself praying in tongues. You don't need to understand it. Is it your encounter? It is his encounter. Allow him to tidy it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are not the one that initiated that encounter. He initiated it. Allow him to tidy it. Except if you have children like us, we, there are some freedom we don't have anymore. But then our type will just get back into the kitchen. Lord the children. 
And once they, you just keep that flame, just keep that flame. Once they go to bed, you, Maya, get in. Sometimes two hours, three hours, you are there. Please stay there. Let the one that authored this experience in you that night finish it. If it's going to take him five hours, let him finish it. This is how a lot of us are bought experiences. I'm saying this to you so that you know about what God is doing in your life this weekend. Simple just things. Tomorrow's morning we're going to continue. Can you open your mouth and pray in the Holy Spirit? We just have only two minutes to do that. Just pray in the Holy Spirit. No one can ever understand supernatural experiences using physical senses because that is where we are missing it. But thank God for light this weekend. Thank God for light this weekend. Thank God for light this weekend. Because we are chained into another man. We are being chained into another man. We are going to allow the author to finish. We are going to allow the author to finish. Just pray in tongues. Let the light of the Holy Spirit be shed on what you have heard this evening. <laughs>